Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Beth Goody from Goody Goods and I'm here today to share with you an FPP tutorial. I will be piecing together this FPP log cabin. I will post the link for the pattern purchase down below. So if you're interested in piecing this along with me, get your supplies and let's get started. Hello everyone, I'm gonna show you how to do some foundation paper piecing today. I absolutely love this technique, but I understand why some of you may be scared to try it. It is a little backwards. It can be confusing, but I'm here to try and make it a little less confusing for you. So I printed out this log cabin quilt pattern and it is an FPP pattern. I thought that if I did a log cabin pattern, um, maybe you guys would be a little bit more comfortable because as quilters, we are usually pretty familiar with the log cabin. So this will be similar in piecing um, direction. It's just gonna be pieced in a different technique. So first thing I want to do is print out my pattern. I don't want to print them straight from the link. I want to download them to my iCloud or you know put them into file format and then print from the file. That way the scaling will be accurate. Sometimes when you try to download from your download links, the scaling can get wonky and everything can be just a little bit off. Grab a ruler and check your one inch reference box. Each and every FPP pattern will have um, a square that you can measure to make sure the scaling is accurate. So this is looking like an inch to me. I'm pretty happy with it. Let's go on to the next step. The next step would be trimming this block. So do you see that solid line right there? The solid line is the end of the pattern and this light shaded area is our seam allowance. So we wanna make sure that we don't cut off the seam allowance because if we do, when we piece our blocks together, we're going to lose part of the block. So you really want to be sure to make certain that you are not cutting on this um, solid line. Some patterns will have dash lines. Um, this one has a you know lightly shaded area. You know that this is your seam allowance. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab some scissors. You could also do this with a rotary cutter if you wanted, if you wanted to be a bit quicker. And I'm just going to roughly cut out my block. There we go. It's not perfect. It doesn't need to be. At the very end of piecing this entire block, we can trim um, on our seam allowance line to make it all nice and tidy. But for now, it doesn't matter. You can have a little extra. And so this is when the numbers come in handy. So do you see how there's a one, two, three, four, five, six? There's numbers on there. And that's going to give us the order in which we will be piecing this block. So. As you could probably tell, we are going to start at one. This is going to be our first block. And what we need to remember for any FPP is that any and every time, every single time, your first block is going to be right sides down. Every other block, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way through 13, they are going to be right sides up. For the first block, it is going to be right sides down. This is going to make sense um, when you continue on and you start piecing this together because every other piece besides the first piece, we will be flipping over. And so that might be confusing right now, so let's just jump right into it. So I've got a bunch of fabric, I've got a bunch of red fabric, and I am going to make sure that I have my iron handy so that my fabric sits flat and there's no bubbles or any, any of that. So let's iron this real quick. Do, 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 do. All right, that looks good. So the first piece is pretty easy. You're gonna put it right sides down and you're gonna take your piece of paper and you're gonna lay your um, foundation block onto there. You wanna make sure that number one is completely covered by fabric. You will want a quarter inch around at least extra on every single block. That way you have a seam allowance. So when you're attaching your other pieces to it, you have something to sew onto. So this is obviously pretty big. You could also turn it around. I can see the outline of that and you could lay it like that. But we know that it's gonna be right sides down. This is very important. First piece, no matter what, right sides down. Every other piece will be right sides up. 
So I like to grab some Elmer's glue and just like secure the fabric to the paper because right now there's nothing holding it there. There's no stitches or any of that. So the glue just helps keep your fabric in place so that there's no shifting or any of that. So what I like to do is I take my glue and I put it on the back side of block one. And you can see the shadows like, um, so I know that one right there is block one. If this is hard for you um, and you have a nice window by you with some natural sunlight, you could put it up to your window and get a good read of what the back side of the paper has, or you could invest in a light box. And I'm gonna lay my paper onto the fabric, pat it down a little bit, and that's what it looks like from the back side. So I've got one there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to two. So this is block two. And I'm gonna grab another piece of fabric. And sometimes you can just start clipping away. There we go. I'm gonna iron it to make sure it's nice and flat. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a card or a flat edge of some sort, you could use your add a quarter inch. A straight edge side you could use to fold back your paper. I really like to use just a card because I always have one on hand. So I like to put my card right below that line just a hair and then I fold my paper back. And the reason why we're on this line, why we're working on this line is because we know that the line that connects one and two is this line right here. So we know this is the line that we're gonna fold on and this is the line that we're gonna sew on. So we're gonna fold it back. And do you see this extra fabric from piece one? This is great, it's good to have extra, but what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take a ruler, I like the add a quarter ruler, and we are going to trim down our seam allowance. This is to ensure that our um, seams don't get too bulky and crazy so you're gonna take your rotary cutter and just slice it across or if that's too much for you you could just eyeball it and cut a quarter inch across and then we're gonna take our number two fabric and we're gonna have it face up facing us and what we're gonna do is we're gonna look so I know this little block right here is the outline of block two. Let me outline that for you just in case it's not showing up. So this, I know, is block two. So what I want to do is I want to lay this whole piece directly on top of my number two fabric. Kind of line up so that that seam allowance doesn't get crazy. You don't want a lot hanging off. And I'm gonna make sure that there's at least a quarter inch all the way around this shape. And as you can see, there is a bunch of extra on here. So I know that this is gonna work. You could, again, at this point, you could put this at a light box. You could put it up to a window if you weren't quite sure. But I know for sure that this shape is fully enclosed with the fabric right here. So let's just go over that again. So. We have just attached or glued our number one fabric to our foundation paper. So this is covered. We now want to move to part two right here. We will fold our paper down right at that line that connects one and two, fold it down, trim our seam allowance a quarter inch, take our next fabric, Make sure it's ironed nice and flat, and then we will place our whole piece right there. Right sides up, guys, right sides up. After the first block, everything is right sides up. And then I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch this end to that end, that little line. And I'm also going to change my stitch length on my machine to 1.4. This is gonna make tearing the paper out at the end of this project a little bit easier, and it won't tear out your stitches. So very, very short stitch length. Do not forget that. So I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine, and I'm gonna stitch from this point of the line to this point. All right, so we got done stitching on this line, the line that connects one to two. And so let's flip this over. This is what we've got right now before doing anything, okay? We've got number one, right sides up and this part is 
wrong sides up. And what we're going to do is we're going to flip it over on this line. You can give it a good finger press or you can bring your iron over and just iron it flat. Nice and flat. Sometimes I give it a little tug to make sure it's super, super taut. And then we are going to flip our piece over and make sure that this doesn't fold back over. We want this to stay this way when we flip it back over. See? So it's going to stay like this. We're going to lay it down. And now we're going to look for the line that connects block two to block three. And that line is going to be this line right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn our block, making sure that our fabric doesn't shift underneath. Turn it so that the line is like that. We're going to take our card or any straight edge, lay it a little bit, just a hair underneath that line, and fold it over. Then we will take our add a quarter inch, or we can eyeball it, and we are going to trim that seam allowance before we attach the next piece on. This is going to make sure that your seams do not get bulky. This is a very important step, otherwise things would just get crazy. I am just going to eyeball it again so that I don't have to move this out of the camera range. doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. So now I'm going to look for a piece of fabric that could easily enclose this shape right here with a quarter inch around extra for the seam allowance. So I think this looks pretty good. You can kind of audition fabric and say, wow, I've got a lot of space all the way around. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this fabric. And I'm gonna iron it. And I might just trim it down a little bit because it is obnoxiously too big. All right, this actually might be a good size. Okay, so now we are gonna fold that down on that line that we just folded on. And we are going to lay our piece on top, face up, face up. We're gonna lay our paper down that's already got our pieces. And then we're gonna take this on over to the sewing machine and we are gonna sew on this line right here. Okay, so this is what the block looks like right after sewing it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this on over on itself. Sometimes I like to iron before I flip just to set the seam and then I will bring it on over, give it a slight tug, and press. And wait and press. All right, let's go on over to block number four now. We are gonna find the line that connects three to four. So what line connects block three to block four? That is gonna be this line right here. So we're gonna flip our block around so that we can fold our piece of paper over, making sure that this is laying flat. We don't want this, any of this to flip back over or anything crazy. Make sure that you have this the way you ironed it down and then move it over, flip it over. Then we're gonna take our straight edge, go a little bit underneath that line, fold it over, and trim our seam allowance. Let's see if I can get a little um, trimmer over here. That way we can see what the quarter inch does. The quarter inch ruler is a wonderful ruler. It's got a little raised edge right here. So it does a fantastic job at gripping onto your paper and not budging. And it gives you a nice raised edge to guide your rotary cutter across. So there is our quarter inch seam allowance. We are now going to look for another piece of fabric. Let's go for this one. We're gonna iron it. And let's just trim it down a little bit because it is pretty big. We want it to fit, but we don't want a, a bunch hanging off and getting in our way because sometimes that gets distracting. So let's see, let's lay this over four, wow. It's definitely big enough. You see four? See this piece of fabric? We know this is definitely gonna fit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that everything's laying flat and nice. 
we're going to put our next piece of fabric face up, right sides up, and we're going to lay our block down. And again, we are making sure that number four, which is this right here, you can see the outline from the other side of the paper through it. And if you can't, put it up to a window, put it on a light box, use your phone, flashlight, whatever you need. And I'm going to make sure that the fabric right here encloses that shape and has quarter inch extra on these three sides so that I have something to sew on to for the next blocks. This is definitely big enough. So we're going to take it on over to our sewing machine and we're going to sew on that line, the line that connects three to four. So let's take it on over and sew. All right, this is what it looks like right after we get done sewing. I'm going to take my iron, set my seam, and then flip it on back. I hope it makes sense now why we have piece one being the only piece face down. So it's facing away from the block. That's because piece one is the only one we haven't folded over on itself, right? Every other block we've attached onto piece one and we flipped those blocks over when we got done sewing them. That is why it's so important to make sure that your first block is right sides down and every other block is right sides up because every other block, you're gonna do this little flip de flip okay? So now we're gonna move on over to number five. And we're gonna look for the line that connects four to five. And I can easily see it right here. Hold on. Four to five, I know that it's this line right here. So I'm gonna fold on that line and I'm gonna sew on that line. We're gonna get our quarter inch seam allowance. We're gonna lay our ruler down, catch it right on the edge with that nice raised edge of the ruler and trim our quarter inch seam allowance. And then we're gonna find another piece of fabric that will fit five. So let's try this one. This looks like it's good. Maybe give it a little trim so that we don't have a ton of loose fabric hanging around. I'm gonna give it an iron so that it lays flat in my block and doesn't get all crazy nice and flat and with this being a solid it doesn't really matter what side is facing up because they're both essentially the same so you'll find that with batiks and solids it doesn't necessarily matter but with um, printed fabric there's definitely a wrong side and a right side so it might be a good thing to practice with solids or batiks first just so you get the technique of finding what lines you need to go to next and then once you get the technique down, you can move on to some pattern fabrics. So I'm gonna lay my block down on that piece of fabric. I know that that piece of fabric encloses this shape right here of block five, and then I'm gonna sew on that line. Bring it on over to our ironing mat, set our seam just a little bit, fold it over, give it a little tug, and press it down. And a lot of times with FPP, you're gonna have some weird angles and you don't really want to distort your fabric. So when you're pressing, just lay your iron down and press. Don't kind of go like this because that motion will distort your fabric and distort the design that you are trying to achieve with FPP. So that's nice and flat. We're gonna go on to the next piece. We just got done with five. So now we're gonna go on to six and we're gonna find the line that connects five to six that line right there. We're gonna fold it down, grab our cutting mat and our ruler, trim our seam allowance, and pick our next fabric that is going to enclose block six for us. Let's see, will that one work? It's a little weird shape, but it will work. So I'm gonna iron it. lay it face up on my mat or my cutting table or whatever surface I'm working on face up. And then I'm gonna lay my block that I'm working on on top of it. And sometimes you can lift up your block and make sure that, okay, I know that there's extra here. I know that there's extra down here. I know there's extra over here. So I know for sure that number six is enclosed with that fabric. And then I'm gonna go sew it. 
I hope by at least this part in the block, it's starting to kind of make sense to you and it's not so intimidating anymore. There's really only two rules in FPP. Those two rules are that your first block needs to be right sides facing down. And then the next rule is your stitch length needs to be set to one and a half or lower. That is really the only rule. So now we're gonna go to seven. We're gonna find the line that connects six to seven and it's this line right here. We're gonna fold it down. We're gonna take our mat and our add a quarter ruler. And again, you could just eyeball this and trim it. I find that when I use my ruler and a mat and I lay it down flat, these pieces don't wiggle and go crazy. So I get a more accurate seam allowance. But you could definitely eyeball it and save some time if, if that's what you prefer. So now I'm gonna find fabric that is gonna fit seven. As you can tell, these pieces are getting a little bit bigger or longer. So I'm gonna use this fabric. I gave it a quick press so that it's flat. I'm gonna lay it face up, right sides up. Lay my block on there. You can make sure that it's big enough. It is, so now I'm gonna go stitch it. This is what it looks like right after sewing. I'm gonna set my seam, pull it back, kind of give it a little tug, not crazy to where your stitches are popping out, but just tug it a little bit so it lays super, super flat. Press it and then flip it back on over. So now we are gonna go over to eight. And you kind of always want that number like ahead of you so that you can fold your paper down over that line. So you're, you're gonna see me kind of rotating my paper and that is what you wanna do. So the line that connects seven to eight is this line right here. So we're going to lay our card underneath for straight edge, fold it down over itself, get our ruler, lay it down, and trim. And then we are going to find our eight fabric. So, Let's use this fun polka dot fabric. That's pretty fun. And sometimes you just have to like lay it over that piece and see if you've got enough room. So I think that that's long enough. So I'm gonna trim this down a little bit. I'm going to iron it, get it nice and flat. FPP, you want things to be pretty flat. You have got your fabric right size up, and then I'm gonna go stitch on this line right here. Bring it on over to your mat, set your seam, pull that fabric back, press. And we will continue to repeat these steps until we finish our block. So now we just did eight, we're gonna to go to nine. The line that connects eight to nine is this line right here. So we're gonna take our straight edge, put it underneath, trim our seam allowance. And it's always a good um, idea to have a trash can nearby when you're doing FPP. I will save bigger chunks of fabric that I could use in other blocks. There's gonna be some waste. There's just really no way around that. looking pretty good. Flip it on over. We are going to have 11 up next. So I'm putting it up this way because I know I'm going to be folding down. I'm going to find the line that connects 10 to 11 and I know it's this line right here. So I'm going to fold it down and take it to my trimming area. Trim that quarter inch. Seam allowance. All right so we've got our piece 11 fabric cut and ironed and we're gonna have it right sides up facing you and we're gonna lay our block down line up that seam allowance and sew on that line bring on over set our seam and then pull back and 
really iron that down nice and flat. And you can always take some time to iron other pieces if they're getting wrinkly in the process. So now we're at 12, so I have 12 at the top, and I'm binding that line that connects 11 to 12. I can see that that line is right here. So I'm going to line up my straight edge right underneath, fold down, trim. This is why I like FPP. It's such a repetitive process. It's very uh, meditative almost. I really like it, and I like that I don't have to be super precise. You know, FPP already gives you the line that you need to sew on, so you don't need to be using all of your brain all the time with cutting and math. You kind of just get to have fun with it. So now I'm going to find a piece of fabric that will fit 12, and I can always flip it on over and see kind of what I've already done so that I don't have fabric. Um, repeating itself close to each other. I think I'll use that fabric. So I'm gonna iron it, because it's a bit wrinkly. This is coming out of my scraps. So I'm making this block into a quilt. I'm gonna go through all of my scraps from FPP. I have them organized by rainbow order. And I'm gonna make log cabins, and then we will have a scrap block party next month with a bunch of YouTube creators and we will piece all the blocks together to make the quilt top. So I thought it'd be cool to use up all my scraps and do some FPP and teach you guys how to do FPP as well. We're on to our last piece. We only have one more piece to go. Set your seam, flip it on over, give it a little tug so that it lays nice and flat and give it a nice press. You don't want to use any spray with FPP because you will make your paper soggy. So no, no steam, no best press, none of that. You could always prep your fabric beforehand so that it's super, super flat. You could starch it. Just make sure that your pieces are dry before you start attaching it to the paper. So we're on to 13. It's the very last piece. We're looking for what line connects 12 to 13. And it's this line right here. So we're gonna lay our card, our straight edge underneath and trim that seam allowance. I'll go sew this last line and then we'll meet back to trim our block. Okay, I apologize for the lighting. I know it's not super great, but I'm gonna show you how I trim. So let's zoom in a little bit so that you can see where I'm trimming and where I'm not trimming. I'm gonna take this really cool line. It's called Quick Line 2 by Nancy Crow and I'm gonna line it up and I'm going to line up my solid line on over to the edge and I'm gonna trim. See how I didn't cut on that um, straight solid line? I made sure I left a quarter inch around. So I'm gonna do that all the way around this block. And don't be too quick to throw these pieces away because those could come in handy in another block down the road. I like to save as much fabric as I can. Like this fabric, I could probably get rid of. It's a little bit small. But this fabric, that's a good size for using later on in the future. But there we go. We just finished our first FPP block together. I really hope this tutorial was helpful for you. Um, I really do enjoy this technique. So if you've been on the fence trying to decide whether it's worth to try, it definitely is. That's about it. I can share some more tips and tricks for FPP if you're interested, um, like how to seam rip with FPP so that you don't rip your paper and so that you can keep going with your project. If you're interested in those type of videos, please let me know. I would love to film them for you and get you a little bit more comfortable with FPP. But that's it for today. Bye guys.